definitely got it. <gasps> See, I was. <laughs> I knew it was going to do that. Hard headed. Can't nobody tell me what to do. I'm a strong Don't black woman. Tell me what to do. <laughs> Welcome to Points Were Made, the show where we don't just score points, we also make them like bright angles. I'm your host, Rodney Rakai, and before we get into today's game, I want to introduce our guest. First up is a talented actress and a good friend of mine by the name of Alicia Renee, but I'm going to call her Heartthrob. Next up is my brother and an author of seven self-published books. His name is Rob Hill Sr., but here on Points Were Made, we're going to call him Love Jones. So today on Points We're Made, we're gonna play some pool. I'm gonna establish the house rules so everybody out there understands how we getting down today, all right? Rule number one, if you scratch on the break, the game is over, fam. Rule number two, if you hit the eight ball in any time before your final shot, you automatically lose. Rule number three, you got to call your eight ball. You can't freestyle your eight ball shot. That's just standard, all right? Now I'm ready to see what Rob and Alicia can do on this pool table, and maybe I'll hop on myself. Let's get to it. Shh. Don't even breathe. Okay, hey, yo. Did I get something? Did I get something? That was that was jarring. I didn't expect that. Oh, you are a powerful woman. You're a powerful you black woman. I am a you did that. strong. I see that. Woman. Wow. You did that. <laughs> break this out. Oh, okay, okay. What well, we get there? What did he, I, I got, we got a stripes. We got two stripes. Dang. Yeah, yeah. Oh, don't wait. Shoulder shrugs. So you grew up playing basketball. Yes, basketball or football. You think you were better than me? Definitely. So we, Definitely. we've played one-on-one. -on -one. What were the results? No, 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 no. See, that's, no, no, no. What Let's start this over. Let's start this. <laughs> we were at a party. That's a fact. <laughs> we were at a pool party. Damn, I hit it too hard. This dude took his shirt off in the middle of the party I and asked it. me to play one-on-one. -on -one. Rodney is my one friend and he's like, we could cuss each other out. We know we're gonna be solid, but we definitely gonna cuss each other <laughs> and out. And we undid it several For times. For sure. Did you grow up playing sports? I did. I actually ran track until a girlfriend of mine actually she didn't tuck her heel, uh, her hind leg in properly, plus all her fronts. That was I hard. Track that day. Really? I had one track meet and Me I pulled my hamstring. I never ran track again. Oh, that's why I'm faster than you. It was a, what? <laughs> we can race right now. <laughs> I almost took my shoes off. One thing about both of you is healing is, is very, 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 very important. And you both talk about it quite often. Last week, you and I had a conversation and it was rooted in like how we heal from the things that we deal with, the rejection in this industry, like not feeling like we've arrived at a place that you know we deserve to be. And obviously they, they've dubbed you the heart healer. You know, why, why is it so important for us to be intentional about healing ourselves from traumas that we know or maybe we're unaware of on a subconscious level? You can look at us generationally. We weren't always allowed to have the space to not be okay. Black men didn't have the opportunity to say where they're not okay. You mm -hmm. have to be strong. You can mm -hmm. express your feelings. Thank you for acknowledging I'm not trying that. to speak for y'all. No, thank you for acknowledging that. That's you what know, yeah. um, And then as black women, we just have this feeling like we can't not be okay. For sure. To not be deemed the angry black woman. We can't have a bad work day or just, you know, a challenging issue within the relationship. I love the fact that mental health awareness is becoming more prevalent, having those conversations and providing safe spaces. Writing naturally is, is therapeutic, mm -hmm. right? But I started working with a therapist probably like, uh, like eight months, eight months ago. Is that when you started? Yeah. That's yeah. amazing, man. Um, and feel? lighter. Mm. Uh, one of my goals for the year was to be more lighthearted. Uh, because I have a serious work and I could be head down trying to move the pen. I, f I forget that like life is like beautiful. Mm. It's bouncing and it's joyous and there's a rhythm that I need to jump in. Um, I think just because I'm dealing with heavy topics doesn't mean I need to carry them at every point. Yo, I'm so All glad you time. finally realized you know? that, dog. It's been years that I've been uh, trying to get you to come up out of that. And we yeah. can argue and talk about these things all the time and have been doing so for like 10 years at this point. So to hear you say that you've arrived at that place makes me like very happy as your friend. Bro. It's important to yeah. know like, I'm, I'm taking the work very serious, you know, but a lot of people in my personal life will say like, I don't wanna be around you when you're writing. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just not that pleasant. 
I was writing without fear, and you're gonna uncover a lot of darkness. You're gonna uncover a lot of shadowy places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you think because you have uh, the, the intellect, you know that you can always process these things that you're dealing with, but you don't know whether grief is gonna be two days, two weeks, two years. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it's important to still know that you're healing throughout that whole process. Do either of you feel like there's a fracture between the genders in our community? Yes! Yeah? Was that a real question? How do we repair it? This, but it's, it's tricky. <laughs> My gosh! I don't, yes. I don't feel that way, but I see it on social media, but sometimes I can't, I can't really know if it's real or if it's just social media. Um, I think social media has sensationalized a lot of it, but I do think as a community, we definitely have um, a divide. There is a huge, a large chasm between uh, black men and women. The issue that is bothersome to me is when I see, and it's dual fold, it'll be the men that say they don't date black women because we're Combat, combative and argumentative and all of the, uh, just a litany of things, mm -hmm. you know, about us, you know, and then they want to use that as an excuse to why they date outside their race. So, so just, but, but, but statistically speaking, 88% of black men marry black women. Like, I think that's kind of a farce. And I think that sometimes people highlight, you know, the, the black men who date outside of their race and don't necessarily talk about the black women who do the same thing. We're not alone in that. There are tons of successful black women who for whatever reason choose partners outside of our community. Oh, nice. That is not something that only exists in black men. I'm a product of uh, different races wanting to get together and intermingling. Nice. But <laughs> date who you date, but just don't put us down in the process sure. of it. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, you know, black women dating outside of their race and that there's no, there's in your perspective, relatively no pushback when they do that. I don't see the videos of black women putting down black men. What? When they do so. You don't see that? I don't, I don't see it. Oh, I'm, not see saying, I'm not saying it doesn't yeah, exist. I'm yeah. just saying I don't see it. So this is why I said, I started off by saying social media sensationalizes it because people do a lot of dumb stuff when cameras are on. Um, people say a lot of sentences um, on social media that you would probably never hear them verbally say in real life. Um, and I think that social media is a place where it's really easy to grab the worst of something and make it seem like it's everything that's happening out there. <laughs> so one of the things that I wish I had early on in my career mm -hmm. was a mentor. Where do both of you stand on mentorship? How important has it been for you? And do you see yourself as a mentor at this stage in your career? I'll, I'll say mentorship has been pivotal for me as a young writer, um, just because the industry is, is old, but I don't consider myself a mentor. I was actually talking to Alicia about this a little bit. Um, that's, that's a little uncomfortable for me because I'm still in process myself. Um, I'm in the process of whooping your ass right now. For I see sure. that. We, Boy going we, off over here. We are in the process of whipping. Uh, my fault. Okay. My fault. I wish I had a mentor. Yeah. Damn. Because Damn, it's fun. more specifically just about, you know, finances and planning for the years where your phone isn't ringing. Well, you're not hot. You know? It's, it's very easy to get cold out here. <laughs> Quick, you yeah. know, uh, how to properly network as a woman. Like you think about Me Too, where it's allowed uh, well, I, women. I think she got it. I think she got it. <laughs> <laughs> now you have faith in me. You don't have faith in me for the last I don't think she got it. how long. I don't think she got it. Now all of a sudden, you did good. You good. Did good. Just uh -oh. focus on the questions. <laughs> <laughs> like I was saying, yeah, yeah. Um, you think about, uh, like Me Too, that movement, just women being able to have more agency and feeling comfortable in their workspaces and having a voice to articulate when something just doesn't feel good for them. Let's just take a look at the table to see what's going on, see what's happening with the score. It looks like uh, Rob Hill Sr. has four balls on the table. Yes, he does. And yes, Alicia does. and Rodney only have one. Just one. And so at, at the half, it looks like that you're trash and we're not. Mm. I feel mm. that in my bones. Mm. It's just... Mm. Right Talk here. about it. So y'all feeling good? I feel great. Oh, you just... Oh. Never mind. Let me just... <laughs> oh, I can't. I just okay. Like, so I'm <laughs> trying, like, you talking about the Jordan so, You trying to get your competitive edge on. Oh, oh, you see it though. I'm going to this. I'm going to Y'all feeling good about you. I'm just making sure you were alive. That's it. You're right. <laughs> That would have made y'all really look like y'all were talking about it. Yeah, they both win it. 
<laughs> it was close though. I would have backtracked. It was so close quick. though. Rob, one thing about you, man, you've been pretty private. You know, your words, they travel very far. People cling to them. Why have you chosen not to showcase the aspects of yourself that I get to experience as your friend, as your brother? There is a certain responsibility that comes with writing and building an audience and putting yourself out there. And I just realized that, like, Rob, you're going through some of the most delicate years of your life. You don't have to share it all. You don't have to be perfect through it all. You don't have to even perform through it all. Yeah. You could be good at what you do, and you could let that be enough for the people who appreciate it. Our industry is, is Alicia, is full with a lot of rejections, a lot of no's, and you. Thousands. It's very painful to be told no, and it, it feels personal because somebody is saying no to you mm -hmm. in certain regards. How, do you, how have you dealt over the years with the rejection um, for opportunities that maybe you thought you were perfect for, you were ideal for, and, and how has your spirit rebounded? Because I feel like you're in such a beautiful place now. It's just remembering that you're always good enough just as you are, that there isn't a part of you that you have to like dress up or put a bow on it and make that thing fancy. You, and, and it comes in time. All right, focus. I mean, I'm like she's trying to cut that. Hey! I wasn't even going for that one. Are you not going? Well, okay. Oh. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to help her out. I'm yeah. so excited. Okay. Go, for the, go for this one. No, I'm no, no, no. Yeah, see, you don't. I'm oh, you thought, I thought you was a protector of black women. Yeah, I hit shot, set them up. There you go. Uh. Okay. Hot dog, I hit it too hard. I was talking smack to oh, early in the game, huh? You, uh, you, you did, but you I know, did. it's all good. You I feel like if you don't have faith in you, you even, That's not even what you was trying to do, bro. Corner pocket. Hey, bro. <laughs> hold on, bro. Look at her put in there. <laughs> That's not even what she was trying to do, it's son. On it's on camera. Bruh. It's on camera. You was not going for that pocket. You can study the film later. Oh, Rob, you said God. you weren't going to play. Like, no, no, no. Y'all can study the film when stuff. it was five. I'm about one. to lose again on some fluke stuff, bruh. Right. We're going to put it right there. Right. I'm so tired of losing. Everybody's it. tired. We're all ready. Let's do this. <laughs> right. Damn. <laughs> God damn it! I can't. It's because I talk. I was talk. I talked too much smack early. Uh, it's my competitive. No, like, no, I can't believe y'all. Y'all went hard. I, I can't believe. Down. I <laughs> let us down. <laughs> I lost again. I, all I want to do is make some points. I just want to win one game, one yeah. challenge. <laughs> I wanted you here because your conversations are important. Anytime yeah, that we talk, you just, you. You, it's, it's so full of wisdom and love and um, enlightenment. Perspective. Yeah, Thanks, I just God. appreciate it. Like, she just be like, boy, pick yourself up. Stop acting like you ain't good. And I just be like, am I that? <laughs> and when somebody that you always looked up to you know, has those words for you, it, it just means that much more. And if I had to lose and pull to anybody, I'm not mad at losing to a brother whose head is like an eight ball. <laughs> so that's just, yeah, he thought I was going somewhere else. Of course. Thank y'all for checking out another episode of Points Were Made. I'm your guy, Rodney Lakai. Till next time. <laughs> Peace.